I thought I seen smoke come out of here, yo. Like, <laughs> when I opened it, I was about to say, I don't know, bro. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First Week Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Wiz Khalifa. He's a platinum selling artist with more than a decade in the rap game. His latest album, Rolling Papers 2, is out now, and you can catch him on the Dazed and Blaze tour coming to a city near you. Wiz Khalifa, welcome to the show. What's up, dude? Chillin', how about you, bro? Big chillin'. Well, I want to start by bringing up a Rostrum Records vlog from 2009. There was okay. a camera crew following you around New York City, and you said, None of that spicy shit, man. I don't like hot food. Fuck all that. I like to enjoy my food. Yeah. What's your mindset going into this? I like spicy now. I was younger back then, and um, I got a little bit older. Taste changed. Developed uh, a thing for the spicy. A more evolved palate from Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, baby. You ready to get it going? Let's do this. All right, so this first one is the Howler Monkey. Howler Monkey? Yep. Okay, started the handle. Not that bad. So lately you've been obsessed with working out, more specifically Muay Thai at that hyper-exclusive gym in West Hollywood, Unbreakable. Mm -hmm. That's such an interesting scene there because you could be working out alongside Usher one day yeah. and then Chris Pratt the next. Mm -hmm. When you think about all the larger-than-life people that you've shared a gym with, be it Sylvester Stallone or what have you, mm -hmm. is there a story that stands out? Um, I think they're all pretty unique, especially like sparring with some of the guys. Like I got to spar with Chuck Liddell. Freaking Randy Couture, uh, Tyron Woodley, who's the UFC champ now. So it's like there's no real uh, filter in between. It's like you just right there with those people and you just get it on. So it's, it's, it's all pretty unique to me. And then Jay Glazer actually said that you're the only person to ever hurt him with a body shot. Yeah. And he trains with the likes of Randy Couture yeah. and Chuck yeah. Liddell. What's the secret to throwing a really strong hook? For real, for us, a lot of rotation, like just in the hips. And like you got to throw somebody off so it's like with Jay I just caught him we were like up close with each other and I uh, I faked him high and he went high and then I, I seen that open and I just snuck snuck one in real quick <laughs> if you ever put in a position where you had to defend yourself what would be your go-to combination my go-to combination if I had to defend myself I'd probably just do a nice little teep just kick somebody in the face like from real far away <laughs> Heartbeat sauce. All right. That tastes good. It's kind of sweet. As Taylor Gang knows, you rep Pittsburgh to the fullest on wing two. I'm hoping to get Wiz's guide to the Steel City. What can you tell the people about Eaton Park? Have you ever ended a burn ride there? Yeah, I mean, you always end up at Eaton Park. It's like one of the only places that um, stays open 24 hours in Pittsburgh. There's one in Squirrel Hill. There's one at Homestead, and there's one all the way out, like, by the north side. Do you have an opinion on the best pizza in Squirrel Park, Minio's or Aiello's? There's, like, a difference in the cheeses. It just depends on how cheesy you want to go that day. But um, I'm not I'm not picky. And then there's a lot of crazy shit in Pittsburgh, be it the Mattress Factory or the Cathedral of Education. Can you recommend a go-to tourist attraction for when you're under the influence? Under the influence? Go to the Science Center. <laughs> the Carnegie's. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have fun there. Now that you've traveled the world and you've toured the country, is Permanti Brothers still the most innovative sandwich you've ever come across? I think so, especially based off of the bread uh, and the and the meat and fry combination. It's just, it's so good and so cool. I never had anything that was like that innovative ever. You're right. Do you have a favorite Yenzer expression? Pittsburgh slang always cracks me up. Um. Instead of saying like that, like they'll say like at. I like I like when they say that. <laughs> Pirate's lantern. I gotta carefully eat this. I'm not diving in like you. Yeah. You're a wild boy. Oh, that's like a mustardy mm -hmm. mustard sauce. But still no problem. It's kind of sweet. I like it. Oh shit, I just licked my finger with this hot ass shit on there. That's a rookie mistake there. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Not never again. Let's do this. 
So a couple years ago, we interviewed Chevy Woods about his role as Taylor Gang's de facto chef. Mm -hmm. Does Chevy Woods still get down like that in the kitchen? Yeah, Chevy gets busy, especially being that uh, we all work out now. So it's like, niggas got to eat. And then I saw recently you posted a picture with Salt Bay. Did you eat at his restaurant? And if so, does it live up to the meme? Yeah, I definitely ate at Salt Bay's restaurant and it's really, really fucking good. Like, it's amazing. When it's not a home-cooked meal, do you have a go-to spot when you're on the road? I usually try to hit up famous spots like in the East City. So if it's like, if I'm in Chicago, I'll go to Harold's. You know what I'm right. saying? Like whatever's popping there, like that's what I like to eat. For the uninitiated, can you explain the power of Nando's? Nando's is wild um, because you really don't get any good American food overseas. And it's the closest to home tasting. Like they got the spicy, they got the rice, they got the corn, they got all the stuff that you need. So it's like when artists travel to UK or wherever, they try to find the Nando's for sure. All right, Wes, you ready to move on? I think so. All right, so this next one is the son of zombie. Oh, what, why, what? <laughs> So it's a zombie's child. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, fuck that one. That's just stupid. Dumb. We're in it. It's a dumb taste. So I think I speak for most of the internet when I say one of the most heartwarming things is when we see pictures of you and your son, Sebastian. Nice. And then I know that being a rap dad, it's probably great in a lot of ways, but do you ever find that being a famous rapper intersects with being a rap dad in weird or humorous ways? I want him to know how awesome I am and how awesome my career is, but it's like just playing with him and being there is like what really matters to him being a kid. So. I just kind of just balance the cool with the with the normal. How has being a dad affected your style? Because I know that you said you made the dad hat popular, but recently you tweeted, time for a new hat to come in style. Yeah. Dad hats are annoying. Yeah, I just feel like everybody's wearing the same hat. <laughs> it, is, it sucks. But um, being a dad, like, it, I don't feel like it changed my style too much. Um, I guess I got cool dad swag now. <laughs> Can you pull back the curtain on that fifth birthday? Because even you seem to be surprised with how hard it was ringing off. Yeah, no, nah, it was cool, man. It was fun. Uh, his mom did a great job planning it. I got drunk as shit. Never thought that you could have a cool ass uh, five-year-old birthday party at Dave and Buster's, but it went down. That fucking zombie son, I don't like him. Fuck that guy. Be careful how you just shit. I think I'm still numb from the last one. <laughs> All right, Wiz, well, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Okay. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, and then you just tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Sweet. All right, laptop, please. Thank you, Steven. Thanks, Steven. You probably got a lot of sauce on those keys. Yo, I have put this through a lot. Saucy ass, hot, hot wing laptop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first things first. <clears throat> Here you are bowling. It's important to point out, I think, that you're wearing those Supreme Slayer sweatpants. Yeah. Is this just everyday bowling attire? Yeah, but I was in my room in Vegas. They have a, a room where you could bowl in the room. Nice sweet. The lanes fucking sucked. Oh, really? Oh, it was terrible. I was horrible, I was so frustrated. Because I know besides Muay Thai and pool, mm -hmm. bowling, that's a big hobby for you, right? Yeah, I love to bowl. Have you ever bowled a perfect game? Not yet. What's your high score? 267. So you're close. Close, almost there. I'm gonna get it. And lastly, what do you remember about this night? Is that Jay-Z? That's Jay-Z and Kevin Hart. A very powerful VIP section. Yeah, I remember we were at uh, uh, Greystone, I think back then. That's when Greystone was still popping. And, uh, I was talking to Kev and he was like, he was like, Wiz, how do you do that? And I was like, what? I thought he was talking about like smoking weed and drinking at the same time. He's like, how do you do that, man? I was like, what you mean? He was like, how'd you reach down there and touch that nigga's hand from all the way up here? He was like, I'm short as fuck, I can't do that shit. <laughs> and I started crying. I was like, yo, this nigga is seriously funny as hell. And I tried to get Jay-Z to smoke weed, but he didn't. He on a dope hat though. Smoke some dope. This next one is the Bravado Carolina Reaper sauce. Oh, 
You know about Carolina Reapers. I seen you eat that. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. It was with Chili Klaus. Yeah, with Chili. He was fucking hiccuping and shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit was hilarious. Snap him? Yeah, he's like... <laughs> he loved it. I think it's a little bit more hot than my Scandinavian <laughs> cousins. This is gonna make me hiccup. And snap. Mm -hmm. That's good, but I know about the fucking Reaper. So this ain't shit compared to just popping okay. a pod straight up. I bet. Oh, that's good. Oh my God. That's good. It's hot. Woo! It creeps a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I know that smoking, it's more than just a pastime for you. You have your own strain, Khalifa Kush, and then of course the rolling papers with raw. So since I have a Forbes list stoner in front of me, I want to dive into the business of weed. Can you give us an idiot's guide to this CBD craze that no one will shut the fuck up about? It's really cool because um, they take the THC out of the weed. There's different components in pot that affect your body. The THC is the one that gives you the effect that you feel high in the CBD or cannabinoids. That's the health benefits that you get as it brings that out. And it's good for sleep, it's good for reducing pain. And I think one of the more interesting things that I've seen now that it's legalized in places like California is mm -hmm. you walk into these stores and it's just product yeah. all over the place. Tons. So I feel like that's what the market is these days. It's like trying to get stoned on the low as opposed to like just smoking a joint, you know what I mean? Like right. I feel like in the future smoking pot is actually gonna be like really old school and just ingesting it in all these different other ways is gonna be the way to really get high. When Snoop was on one of the Jimmy's, Jimmy Kimmel, he said that when you guys were on tour together that you'd compete in the Smoke Olympics. Yeah. Who can roll faster, you or Snoop? He rolls faster than me. He definitely rolls faster and more efficient. Because there's been times where I've been thinking I was gonna roll like the best joint in the world, and then he'll just be quiet for like two seconds, be like, here, nephew. I'll be like, damn. <laughs> like, this should just be perfect right away, so. His experience in the game is uh, is proven every time. Where do you have the gold medal on him? I got the gold medal probably just on lungs, like amount, cause I Capacity. yeah I smoke joints, I do bongs, I do dabs and all that. Like he'll do that to hang with me, like like nigga, I'm not gonna let you like outsmoke me, but he don't do all of that on the regular. And, and me, like I'm doing that all day. And then I know that you're a very skilled marketer. If you were to make a THC infused hot sauce, mm -hmm. what would it taste like and what would you call it? It would probably taste like one of these sweeter ones mm -hmm. and I would probably call it sweet fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is the Bunsters out of Australia. Okay. Oh yeah, they got some hot shit down there. Mm-hmm. 16. In the heat, what's that mean? It means it's off the charts, I think. Oh, it's 16 out of 10. Mm -hmm. That shit hot though. Whoa! I don't like it. So when you performed on Saturday Night Live a few years ago, you did a promo spot where you talked about how you have more than 400 tattoos. What can you tell the people about your go-to tattoo artist, Tukey Carter? Uh, he's crazy, he's super funny. He's got a heavy hand, so you can't fucking sit with him and not that, well, you can't be a bitch if you go to two. He's really good. He draws everything like right on you. He doesn't use stencils. So that's why I like him. What's the last thing he tatted on you? Um, I think this pumpkin or the, the, I think I got the spray can and the pumpkin. He tatted those on my face. Can you show him? Yeah, I don't know where they're at. It's like somewhere around here. My son likes pumpkins. He loves orange, he loves Halloween. The spray can is part of the Taylor gang sign. We got like the fence, the spray can. And then can you talk about the philosophy of I think tattooing? I have a pepper stuck in my tooth and that's not cool because it's like making it more hot. Right, it's stuck in there. <sighs> what was you saying? Can you talk to me about the philosophy of tattooing for yourself? Because I've heard you say that you want your tattoos to tell your life story on your body. It's really like shit that I learned throughout life. Yeah, I just leave those experiences open for later on in life and that's what the tattoos are. And I still got room on my legs, like the back of my legs and shit like that. So that's where the uh, tattoos are gonna go when you're 80. Yeah, yep. All right, Wiz, you ready to move on? Fuck. This is the super hot one, right? This is hot. Now I'm gonna get some skin, bro. Oh, 
I gotta stop like swishing it around in my mouth. Right. It's, it's a tough smart. game to learn as you go. It's not smart though, one. cause it's like <laughs> swishing it is just like, dude. This one actually isn't as bad as that one. Really? That black label, that fucking Bunsters was. I ain't like that. Beyond insanity. That shit hot, bro. You're telling me. I'm turn. I feel like I'm red, like you, dog. <laughs> this shit is crazy. All right, come on, what's up? So growing up, I know you dreamed of being in a rap crew and you'd oftentimes defend the diplomats to your friends in Oklahoma who just wanted to listen to chopped and screwed music. So with that in mind, I want to <laughs> show you some of the great <laughs> rap- I'm trying to big my eyes out, bro. I hate this. I want to show you some of the great rap crews of all time and you give me your take to what extent, if at all, they influenced you. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, laptop, please. <laughs> oh my God, my tongue hurts. <laughs> This is probably like what a cat's tongue feels like all the time. They think it's a game. They think it's a game. Oh, man. It's not good, bro. Does milk really help? So. Dude, I asked you a question. I, here's yes the thing. or no? But it's, there's, it's, ah! there's nuance to it. You know, here's the thing. Tell me, is, does the milk work? The milk helps. Okay. Is it going to cure you? No. No, of course. Okay. Not, but it helps. Little, little splash. Okay. A little bit better, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So just go ahead and hit that milk. First things first. All right. Thank you for that real answer, bro. I'm here for you, All bro. I right, appreciate it. All right. First things first. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Love them. Like, my first experiences with rap music was listening to Bone. Got a tattoo of them on my leg. Yeah. Love Bone. <laughs> Three Six Mafia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love Three Six Mafia. Them was my guys. Heavily influenced by them. Probably started getting high, like, on the regular because of them um, and their music. So shout out to 3-6. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more for you. Dipset. Love Dipset. Got into arguments over Dipset. My real name is Cam. So it's like, you know, Killer Cam was my, my walkout music at prom. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Dipset for life. What kind of arguments would you get into, right? Because you were living in well, Oklahoma. Well, people would say that Cameron high. couldn't rap, you know, like when he was on like the Tootie Fruity, Fruity Louie um, wave. But uh, no, nah, you couldn't. You couldn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got more. Are you still in the game, Wiz? Yeah, my mustache is hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hellfire, let's go. Ah. Okay. I thought I seen smoke come out of here, yo. Like <laughs> when I opened it. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know, bro. Pick a side. Go for it. Don't let it linger. Get it out the way. I feel like I'm in the gym with you. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> now my whole throat just got hot from that one. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just the lips. Yeah. Oh. Oh, shit. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's what you give somebody when you want them to snitch. <laughs> <laughs> so you're often cited as one of the first rappers to leverage the power of the internet. Do you think that that's an accurate assessment? No. I could say I'm one of them, but I would say uh, Soldier Boy is like the first. If you were stuck on a desert island with a lifetime supply of Khalifa Kush, mm -hmm. what would be one show, one movie, and one website you'd need to hold you over? One show, power, because I love power. It's power, but we say power in Pittsburgh. That's how we say it, power. Um, one movie, Enter the Dragon, and you said one website, uh, Twitter. There it is, Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, baby. All right. So this is the last dab redux. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want to. Wes. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. All right, I'm gonna do it. Fuck it, I ain't no bitch. Why is this shit so thick? Pause. There, there you go. go. There you go. Oh, that was called the last dab. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, it's y'all sauce. This shit probably ain't even hot. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you want to walk that one back a little bit? Yeah. Ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Cheers. Ah, oh, fuck. I switched sides. Oh, that's so hot. Woo! All right, Wiz Khalifa, here we are at the end of the gauntlet. And as we've discussed today, there are many sides of Wiz, rapper, entrepreneur, father. But like the that. one side that we haven't explored is your burgeoning voice actor career. Mm. Whether it's playing on BoJack Horseman or doing a character on American Dad. But I know that your dream doesn't end there, Wiz. My dream gig is to have like a Disney movie, like a whole fucking movie with my voice behind it. I could be support, I could be the homie. I want to be in a whole movie, me. Now that you have a bajillion Scovilles going through you, right. hot sauce in every corner of your mouth, yeah, word. can you hit the people with a sample of what that voice acting role might sound like? It's going to sound just like this. <laughs> It's very clear now, All the, uh, I got the pepper and shit like that, so we good. We good, we good. <laughs> Dolby Digital Surround Sound IMAX here right through the head. Woo! And look at you, Wiz Khalifa, all the way through the gauntlet. Could have quit at the bomb, but you didn't. You held it out, yep. you came through, and now I just have to roll out the red carpet for you, my man. This camera, this camera, or this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Uh, Rolling Papers 2 is out now. All the videos from Rolling Papers 2 are out now. Make sure you check them out. Hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Khalifa Kush, KK everything, and Rolling Papers 2. My man. Yeah. Good job, Wiz. You feeling good? Woo! That shit's hot, yo. <laughs> the cool thing about it is like they're all like semi-enjoyable. Right. <laughs> like it's not like, oh, I'm about to run the fuck out of here and like rip my tongue out. It's like I could see why people eat this shit. Yeah, exactly. It's like a labor of mm -hmm. love, you know? Exactly. Cause there's like mustardy and then there's like peppery and then there's like good shit. Woo! -hoo! Aloha, Spice Lords. If you're wondering why I'm sitting on this beautiful beach, it's because I'm celebrating Los Calientes, the sauce of summer and the newest addition to the Hot Ones Hot Sauce family. This is Beach Vibes in a Bottle. Sweet, smoky, spicy. And I might be biased, but I think it's the best hot sauce we've ever made. And here's the exciting news. If you want to pick up a bottle, it's available now. You know the drill. Heatness.com. Heatness.com for your bottle of Los Calientes. Los Calientes. Muy delicioso.